you're an old school enthusiast, get one of these. <laughs> this is it. This is the new G80 BMW M3, and I've waited a long time to drive this. I'm <laughs> probably the last like American journalist to drive it, but I'm extremely excited about it because it is a new M3. Now this might be one of the most controversial BMWs in ages, and that's all to do with this thing <laughs> right there. That big gigantic grill is causing quite the stir among BMW enthusiasts, and for good reason. It's shocking looking. Um, I will say it does look much better in person than it does in photos. I still don't like it. I still think the grill is a little wonky looking. Um, but it does look better in person because there's much more depth and sculpture here uh, in person that you can really see that you can't really in photos. So it does look better. Having said that, it's still kind of disproportionate with the rest of the styling. Although, if you do look at the rest of the styling and kind of just forget about this for a little bit, it is a good looking car. It looks special, it feels special. Every time I walked out to it in the morning uh, in my driveway, it definitely feels like an exciting new car. But it's still an M3, so that really doesn't matter so much. What's more important than that is how it drives. So inside of the M3, it's pretty much a standard 3 Series, to be honest. Um, it's all very nice, you know, build quality is really good, everything feels really solid, but it doesn't really look any different from a regular 3 Series. The only sort of M3 bits are like the carbon fiber in the steering wheel, the carbon trim here, um, the little mouse ear, red M1 and M2 buttons on the steering wheel. Um, this thing right here, because it only comes on M3, it's the only 3 Series in the United States that gets a 6-speed manual, is the M3. But also these seats. These are the big uh, difference inside the M3. These are the standard seats, not the cool um, carbon-backed sport buckets that you get uh, as an optional extra in both the standard and competition M3s. These are pretty good seats. Um, they're comfortable, they're fairly supportive. They're not as special or cool looking as the carbon backed sport buckets, but they are good looking seats. They still look cool and they are much more comfortable. The other ones, uh, the carbon backed sport buckets are, you know, they hold you in really, really tight. They look fantastic, but they can be a little bit more uncomfortable in traffic. Also, because this is a manual, these seats don't have that little center thigh divider of those sport buckets, um, which I have a ruder nickname for than thigh divider. But uh, because it's a manual, you're going to be using your left leg quite a bit. That divider, which kind of like has like sculpted spots for your thighs, um, that might be a little bit annoying uh, with a manual. So I would say if you're going to get a manual, this is probably the, the standard seat's probably best for you. Tech in here is pretty standard BMW. You have you know, the new iDrive system. I use Apple CarPlay almost exclusively. It's just so easy to use and uh, fast and responsive. You have your uh, digital dials here, pretty typical BMW fare. If you press the M mode button, you get the M mode uh, display. And uh, that's cool. Uh, it's not, these are not the best digital dials in the business. I would say Audi's virtual cockpit is the best. Uh, and Mercedes new system is also very, very good. Uh, potentially actually even better than Audi's. This, it looks cool. It's a little bit, there's a little bit too much information in too many small places. Uh, so it can be a little bit overwhelming and it's not very configurable. So I don't understand the point of making the dials digital if you're not gonna configure them. Um, but aside from that, they work fine. It's pretty standard BMW stuff right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good though. It's pretty good in practice. Because the grill was so controversial, people thought, okay, but if it drives well enough, if it's good enough to drive, if it's still a proper M3, then who cares? Who cares about the grill if it's still great to drive? Now, I mean, yes and no, right? Because you still have to look at it every day. You still have to get in it every day and you have to own it and it's gonna sit in your driveway all the time. So you have to like the way it looks. But if you're just okay with it, like if it doesn't really, really bother you, the driving experience is absolutely worth the funky looks. So what have we got here? Well, 
it's a pretty classic BMW M3 recipe, right? You have a straight six up front, manual gearbox in the middle, drive going to the back. Now this is an M3, so it's a four door, and because it has a manual, it's the standard car. So that means that the twin turbo three liter straight six up front only makes 473 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque. Now that's down from the competition model's 503 horsepower and 479 pound-feet. I will say this though, even though having a manual is incredibly fun, and I, I'm so happy that BMW is making this and I don't want to make it seem like they shouldn't be making this because I, I love it, I love it. However, I will say that the car does seem a little bit more set up for an automatic. Just the nature of the car itself, it is incredibly... Johnny Lieberman told us recently that he felt it was kind of like a four-door GTR, and I think that that's a really good uh, explanation for what this car feels like, um, because it's so brutal, it's so fast, and has so much grip. Uh, it's literally like impossible to break these tires loose. I mean, they're, they're, it's, there's so much mechanical grip from the chassis, and then so much incredible tire grip that it just feels unflappable. And because of that, it doesn't feel like a tail-happy hooligan. It's not this sort of, uh, it just doesn't feel like that old-school pure M3. It's still a great driver's car, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say it isn't, but it doesn't have that sort of like light chuckable feel to it. It's more, it's, it's more brutal in its approach than previous M3s. The front end is remarkably sharp. I mean, there is zero understeer. I mean, zero understeer. It's fantastic. Um, it's so sharp. It's so accurate. You can place it, I mean, on a dime. It is incredible. It really, really is. Light on feel. There's, you know, really no feedback through the wheel at all. Um, and I still think BMW needs to get better at its, you know, how the weight of the steering amps up as you turn off center. But this is the best BMW steering outside of the M2 CS. But because it's so sharp up front and because there's so much grip, it just, it seems like it's kind of suction cup to the ground. There's no body roll. So it's just this incredible, it's like a snake. It's just so fast and agile and, you know, glued to the ground that it kind of feels like it might be better with the extra power and the automatic. It kind of feels like that was the, the main car from the get-go and that this uh, standard car with the manual was sort of not to appease the enthusiasts because that sounds patronizing, but just to kind of offer that, to still offer a manual. Um, and it doesn't seem like as cohesive of a package as I kind of had hoped for, but but by no means am I complaining. Uh, I'm so happy that this exists. I'm so happy BMW still makes a manual in this day and age. I love the fact that I'm right now in 2021 driving a brand new BMW M3 sedan with a six-speed manual and rear-wheel drive. When everything is going all-wheel drive, everything is going automatic, and everything is going hybrid or electric, the fact that this old-school recipe still exists makes me very, very happy. And if you're an old-school enthusiast, get one of these. Now let's talk the engine. It's the S58 three-liter twin-turbo in straight six. I really think this is one of BMW's best modern engines, period. Um, it's just, it, it's incredibly brutal in its power delivery. It just has all the power you'll ever want and then some at any RPM in any gear. It's just, it's almost an electric motor. It's just got punch everywhere. It's crazy. It sounds okay. It's not amazing. It's not BMW's best sounding engine. It sounds okay. 
Uh, I think it's better than the S55. It's growlier, it has more character, but it's still not amazing. It also doesn't give you much of a reason, at least it hasn't given me much of a reason, to really rev it out to its like 7,500 RPM red line. You know, because it makes so much torque all the time that before you get there, you're in, I'm gonna lose my license speed. So it's really more of like a, you know, between two and 5,000 RPM. You wanna kind of stay in that meaty power band, that, that heavy torque punch power band and it, it, it just lives there. It's fantastic there. You stay at like three and just you put your foot down and, and you get tons of shove. It's fantastic. Are there drawbacks? Of course, you know, like any new car and especially like any new BMW, there are some flaws. For starters, I can't, I can't disregard that grill. It is just not good looking. And it's a shame because as I said before, I think the rest of the car is good looking. Um, even though the rear fender flare should go into the door panel more, and it doesn't at all, uh, it still looks pretty good. It's still a good looking car, I think, and it looks special. You know, walking up to it from the side every day, it feels special, uh, and that's cool. I like that. Even though this is white, you know, I was hoping for a more exciting color. Um, just the white one, it looks really good. It also feels a bit large. Um, it's been a while since I've driven a standard G23 series, but it feels bigger than I remember the regular 3 Series feeling. It, it kind of almost feels like an M5, like an older M5. It kind of is quite big. It feels big, at least. And I will say BMW has nailed the driving position. I'm, I'm sitting very low. I often complain about modern cars. I can't sit low enough. I sit every bit as low as I'd like to in this, and I really enjoy that. Um, but even still, I kind of feel like this is a big car. There's a lot of car around me. Um, it's not a problem because it's so capable and it's so accurate, so you can place it exactly where you want. And that's not a problem, but it does kind of feel bigger than I thought it was going to feel. Uh, a lot of that, I think these mirrors, are they look cool from the outside, but they're very, very big. And they kind of give me that plus the eight pillar. I have a pretty big blind spot right here. So like turning, and I'm sitting low. So if you're gonna turn around a corner, I have to like kind of peek around and make sure I'm not clipping a curb or something. It can kind of, be a little bit a little bit sketch sometimes but it's not bad at all it's a minor gripe all of those problems though completely disappear when you actually get to uncork this thing <laughs> oh my God. it's so fast it's so fast you know what you're not gonna miss <laughs> the extra horsepower versus the competition. You're just not. This is so fast and it's more than fast enough. I will say that the competition's extra torque, because it's 50 pound feet more in the competition than this car. That you might notice, you know, in like regular driving or if you're on the highway trying to shoot gaps in traffic, uh, you know, that extra torque might, you might miss. But when you really get to unleash this thing and you really, really hammer it, it's so fast. It's just so fast. <laughs> and the front end is remarkable. BMW has really worked wonders with this. I still don't love the steering feel itself, but the actual reactions that you get from the front end, it's impossible to complain about. It's so good. So that's it. That's the new BMW M3. And it's an interesting car. Probably the most interesting BMW I've ever reviewed. It's not great looking, but it's really good to drive. However, it's very different from every other M3 I've ever driven. It's brutal in its approach. It's incredibly fast, it's sharp, it's dynamic, but it isn't as playful as I remember other M3s being. It's sort of more aggressive, more on the attack, more capable than ever before. It's an interesting car and it's one that I think a lot of owners will be happy to actually own and live with on a regular basis because it's a car that feels special. Sure, its grille isn't that great looking, but when you get inside every morning and you actually take it for a drive, you'll realize that this is something special. And that's what you want out of an M3. That's why you buy an M3. So in that regard, I think it's a success.